3D printing in 2019. It's accessible and it's incredible. As a technology, I've seen it used in everything from design and prototyping, fashion, figurines, prosthetics, and so much more. But I was wondering, just how much better is it now compared to when I first got involved? Well, today we're going to find out with this, the Up Mini, my first personal 3D printer from 2012. And I'm going to test it like it was made yesterday. Let's get started. This little unassuming black box means quite a bit to me. It really was the catalyst that launched me into the position I'm at today. For a bit of history, Tier Time, the company behind this thing, is one of, if not the oldest 3D printer manufacturer out of China. And somewhere along the line, they noticed the rise of small, inexpensive 3D printers being produced by members of the RepRap movement, and that there was a gap in the market for a more polished, ready-to-run solution. So in 2010, they released the Up 3D printer under the PP3DP brand, Personal Portable 3D Printer. And it was at 140 by 140 by 140 millimeter build volume, sheet metal frame, and a lightweight design. It meant it really was portable, and it was affordable at only $2,690 US. It sounds like a lot today, yes, but at the time, it really was quite the game changer. And seeing this as an opportunity, the members of the Sydney Hackerspace Robots and Dinosaurs pulled their resources to buy one in 2011. Now, I was a pleb university student at the time. My uni had 3D printers, big Stratasys dimension machines, but even at the raw material cost they charged us, small prints were still hundreds of dollars sometimes. I simply couldn't afford or justify it, so instead, I joined the Robots and Dinosaurs hackerspace and learned how to use their newly acquired Up 3D printer. It didn't take me long to realize the sheer potential of the technology. I was hooked. So when Tier Time announced in May 2012 that they were releasing a smaller, cheaper 3D printer, the Up Mini, for under $1,000 US, yep, I had to have it. So I scraped together $1,300 redos and I pre-ordered it. The Up Mini is fully enclosed with sheet metal and a plastic front door and top cover. It has a tiny 120 by 120 by 120 millimeter build volume, but it also has this incredibly useful sliding bed so you could hot swap prints back to back. Yes, removable print beds back in 2012. The bed is heated, but it's not controllable. Rather, it's simply got its own circuitry to keep it at a steady 80 degrees Celsius which is needed for the ABS this machine prints. It's actually not compatible with PLA, surprisingly. It gets too hot and PLA jams in the hot end. It's designed to print with ABS and that's what it's done its whole life. And what a life it's had. This machine has printed countless projects, robot parts, outsourced models before 3D hubs was even a thing, even printed parts for my final year project, which was another 3D printer, but designed to to deliver cake icing. No, stop. <laughs> Being ABS, I also used to use acetone vapor smoothing for the parts a lot to get a glossy finish. And that was one of the first videos on this channel. So for the first two years or so of Maker's Muse, this machine was pretty much the only thing I had and what I used on the channel. Unfortunately, during that time, it's also traveled thousands of kilometers across the country in road freight, and it suffered a little bit of damage. The Y-axis belt idler had broken and needed replacing, and the print head needed a fair bit of TLC. It was wrecked, covered in burnt ABS charred nastiness. Cleaning it isn't too difficult though, because it actually just unclips and lifts out of place. It's held in with magnets, so it makes removing it for maintenance Really easy, it takes seconds. I just scraped off as much of the charred mess as I could, and look, it could do with a whole new 3D printed fan duct, but that's a future Angus problem. For nostalgia, I also installed the software I used to use, which was Up 1.17. I loaded in some generic black AVS and got to printing, but unfortunately it seems that the micro SD card internally was also buggered, because I couldn't change the new bed height. I couldn't set it, it would just, it would just try to print in thin air and it wouldn't stick. So all in all though, a new micro SD card and a new plastic part is pretty good 
for a machine that's almost seven years old. Not bad. Once fixed, I sliced and printed this cube without much issue at 0.25 millimeter layers, but that raft, hmm. Because of the perforated holes in the print bed, the Up Mini is really designed to print with a raft, which isn't a big issue in my opinion, because it sticks really well to the perforated platform, but we might have an issue here. The raft was welded to the bottom of the print. I couldn't get it off without damaging it and it was pretty much impossible to remove. Owners of early UP 3D printers will know this issue well and it took people some time to really figure out exactly what was going on and it's to do with temperature. The default ABS print temperature in the UP software isn't 220 or even 240 degrees, it's 260 or 270 degrees Celsius. Insanely high for ABS, but why? Well, you see, when you bought their own brand of ABS, it printed perfectly, with supports and rafts pulling away easily. Now, I have two theories for this. One is that the UP ABS was actually an ABS polycarbonate blend, which would need a higher melting temperature in theory, or the possibility that they intentionally modified all the colors of ABS to melt at the same higher temperature for consistency rather than, for example, white melting at a different temp than black, which happens when you add pigments. Either way, there's no questions that this was intentionally done to try and encourage you to use their brand. And I say that because you can't change the printing temperature in the old slicer from a few presets and none of them are designed for generic ABS. At least they didn't use chips to lock you in filament though. At least they didn't do that. Early hacks to get around this included using a resistor to trick the thermistor into thinking it was a different temperature. I used to use like a 12 ohm in line to make it actually heat up at a lower temperature. And some clever individual on the forums made a DLL which would go into the folder of the slicing software and intercept temperatures and change them when you sliced. It's all very, very hacky. But I used that for many years and even made a video about it. And it actually made this machine fully workable using generic ABS. Now, however, things are quite different. Tier Time has consolidated their brand offering and done away with the PP3DP branding. And now we have Up Studio, the latest of which offers almost total control over printing parameters and material settings. So after a few tests with this ABS, I discovered that 225 degrees Celsius worked really well and the raft pulled away beautifully. I think it's really cool that the latest software still supports this older machine, so big props to Tier Time for that. So, now that you're all caught up to speed, let's throw some test prints at this old thing to see how this entry-level 3D printer from 2012 handles my modern test prints. Let's start with a clearance gauge. At a guess, I thought I'd get down to 0.2 millimeter gaps, perhaps anything lower would be fused, but I was dead wrong. The Up Mini was able to reproduce gaps down to 0.15 without any issue at all. And the detail's actually quite good, especially considering it's ABS. The Gayer Anderson Cat was reproduced very decently as well. The surface looks accurate, though details seem a little washed out. Support material, just like the raft, was easy to remove. And a little tip, if you have the white discoloring when you remove supports and rafts from ABS particularly, you can use a hot air gun to very quickly go over the part and it actually just reforms the original color and gets rid of that crazing which makes it look white. Just be quick at it. I actually did a whole video on using a hot air gun for 3D printing tips and you can find that video here. Finally, I threw my lattice cube torture test at it and it mostly succeeded, but it's definitely not perfect. This test is all about precise extrusion and cooling, but with ABS, the plastic stays soft for longer than PLA, otherwise you get warping and delaminating. I wasn't even expecting it to finish, so at least there's that, but I'm not gonna be trying to print any fine details on this machine anytime soon. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit rough. Regardless, the Up Mini served me amazingly well from the first moment I got it. Even if it only did have a tiny print bed and was limited to its own brand of ABS for a while until I figured out to hack it, in terms of buying a 3D printer to empower my creativity, this machine did exactly that. And I am thankful to have had it as my first experience. It was a big purchase for me back then, almost $1,000 US and a huge risk for me, but it worked as advertised. Now, in 2019, prices have plummeted and the range of 3D printers available has utterly exploded. And it's great, 
but it's also really bad. And I want to take a moment to explain why. If I was back in 2012 able to buy something for less money, let's say two to three hundred dollars, but it didn't work as advertised or had a steep learning curve, or you had to know certain magic settings that the manufacturer didn't even tell you or assist with, I would have probably given up and set aside my dreams of owning and using 3D printers in my home. I mean, I was in my final year studying full time. I needed to produce prototypes for my assignments, not spend my weekends fixing my machine and figuring out why the parts weren't sticking to the print platform. I needed a tool and it just so happened that my interest in everything surrounding that tool became the focus of the industry that I fell into. But let's be real, that's a pretty unexpected turn of events. I started off just needing a tool to reproduce my prototypes. I feel that everyone deserves access to this technology in the form that they enjoy as a tool or as a hobby in itself. It's a bit like cars, right? Like my dad, if his car's battery went flat, he'd just get someone to come replace or jumpstart it. And I'm not sure he even knows how many cylinders he's got in the engine in that, that vehicle. Like, why should he care? It's a mode of transportation for him. Couple that with a car enthusiast who personally knows every nut and bolt on their machine and they've put countless hours into tweaking, tuning, upgrading their beloved rides. You wouldn't daily something like that. If it isn't even reliable, it doesn't matter. You do it because you enjoy it and both approaches are valid. I mention all of this because I don't want people losing interest in 3D printing because they were pushed to make the wrong purchasing decisions by us, the community, or they purchased something that literally doesn't work by a company. We should all be supportive regardless of how someone wants to get involved. Because look, people from all walks of life can really make incredible things using this technology. It's super cool and they all deserve access to it. So with that, I'm happy to announce that I'll be incorporating my beloved Up Mini back into my workflow for ABS 3D printing. So you'll be seeing it again on the channel in future. The successor to this, the Up Mini 2, is still in use. I use it all the time for my ABS prints and my review from back in 2016 is still highly relevant. You can check it out here. And if you found this video interesting, maybe consider subscribing to Maker's Muse. As I always say, it's my aim to empower your creativity through technology. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys. Bye.